Hi friends, this is Ravi here. Uh, thanks for 20,000 subscribers in TechLink YouTube channel. And I'm going to start a new series on Spark SQL. Uh, SQL is one of the important subject and very important skill for any cloud level data warehousing or on-premises data warehousing or data engineering projects. If you look at a cloud level, like uh, most of the on-premises warehouses are coming to cloud, Cloud level warehouses, lake house projects, data science, or data analytics projects. So most of the projects we are using a SQL. SQL is one of the common language for data projects. And especially when it comes to Databricks. So Databricks inbuilt is having a Spark cluster. So when it comes to SQL part here, so Spark SQL. So if you have already native SQL experience, like a, any traditional RDBMS knowledge or experience, that will help you a lot. Plus, we will understand what is exactly Spark SQL, why we should know Spark SQL when it comes to cloud-based data warehouses or you can say lake house projects. Now, last one and a half year, two years, if you observe carefully in uh, Azure site, uh, Databricks site. So, lake house projects, uh, day, like most of the projects are migrating from cloud warehouse to lake house projects. So, when it comes to lake house project, primary skill set, if you look at that, Python, nothing but a PySpark and SQL. So even when you're working on analytics side or maybe uh, unit testing side or maybe ETL testing, when it comes to on-premises, most of the projects, you can find manual testers and ETL testers. But those projects are coming to cloud. So even you can find huge demand for ETL testers in the future. And Lakehouse is one of the common architecture in cloud level, managing different kinds of data for advanced analytics. Even you can expect more demand for advanced analytics like data science, machine learning, deep learning. Uh, Databricks is supporting for that, plus data engineering as well. So if you know Spark SQL at Databricks site, so Databricks is available in all cloud, Amazon, Google, and uh, Azure. And same Databricks is a combination PySpark, if you look at the Spark is one of the commonly used for data engineering and machine learning. And uh, Azure is having their own uh, analytics combination tool that is called synapse analytics even there also it will help you a lot if you know the sql uh, like there also they're having a spark sql pool primarily writing a spy spark code there so it will help you a lot in future it may be data engineering part it may be analytics part it may be uh, etl testing part even you can expect huge demand at cloud data warehouses and lake house projects etl testers because uh, most of the data when, when we are migrating historical data to cloud, you see a lot of uh, junk issues and other data issues for that uh, we need a more uh, ETL testers. So manual testers, it won't help because if anybody is having good experience on ETL testing, so they can understand the data, they can understand the flow because when we are migrating from data on premises to cloud, you see a lot of data issues due to uh, reason may be anything, but uh, identifying issues and fixing those issues is the primary solution. So for that, SQL is one of the common language. So for that, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start a continuous Spark SQL series. SQL will be same in, uh, it may be Synapse, it may be Databricks, it may be uh, Snowflake. Only few internal architecture is differ, but internal architecture also we are going to cover in Spark SQL part primarily on Databricks side. And practical part also, you don't need to worry about anything, which we can practice everything in community edition. You don't need to pay any single rupee for that. Everything you can practice at cloud side. So what I'll do, I'll start from beginning. So how to create a community edition, how to create community edition, how to start using community edition. And even I have a video, I have a two, three videos already did on how to create a free trial, in other words, community edition. And there, how to use a Spark SQL, like how to create a cluster, how to use the Databricks notebooks to start learning Spark SQL. So for that, I have created a complete content related to SQL. So like every database language, if you look at this, SQL is common commands like data definition language, data manipulation language, data retrieval language, and data control language. Okay, so have divided these commands separate, like a data definition, right? Creating a database, creating a table, creating a view, dropping database, dropping table, dropping a view. Similarly, 
data manipulation language insert update delete merge when it comes to merge scd type 1 type 2 type 3 truncate restore and data retrieval language like select queries joins hints set operators where group by order by clustered by distributed by so uh, i have divided uh, easy to understand easy to learn complete spark sql so what i'll do i'll start from beginning so why sql why sql and uh, why we should know sql and when it comes to traditional rdbms right so any database application database point of view so most of the sources are on premises etl point of view the sources are databases even you should have some basic idea about a sql when you are reading data even if you are in big data so sql is not a programming language sql is one of the query language mainly working with the databases mainly working with the databases so you can work with any databases like oracle data data sybase mysql sql server or when it comes to cloud also snowflake sql servers redshift bigquery so sql is one of the common lang language to interact with the databases so when you compare high level when you compare at high level interacting with rdbms are creating databases creating a tables inserting data inserting data into database table or retrieving data from database table or deleting data from database table or updating data into database table removing entire data nothing but truncating data dropping database dropping table adding a column removing a column change data type for these purpose you should have basic idea in sql so for that region i have divided this entire sql into separate command bases command bases means like it's a basic thing which every developer should have idea like data definition language data definition language primarily we will divide into create alter drop rename truncate data manipulation language insert update delete merge data control language grant revoke data retrieval language or data query language nothing but sql select query select statement transaction control is not applicable for big data file system because the backend is a file system that is applicable only for rdbms so here we can ignore this tcl commit and rollback because the file system databricks manages internally with the help of delta so delta manages this tcl part so you don't need to explicitly Commit or rollback internally it will take it because the backend will be file system distributed file system so primarily we will focus on data definition data manipulation data control data retrieval data control anyway community edition you cannot like uh, majorly it is available at premium workspace in databricks so dcl even it is applicable the security part like uh, giving access and reworking access table level like uh, that that is possible here but primarily data definition like creating databases creating tables creating views data manipulation insert data update data delete data or merge upsets then anyway data query language select statement so that we will focus on this that we will focus on sql part and the next video what we will do we'll start from before starting a sql first we'll understand some basics in databricks what is exactly file system and uh, where it will store data how it will store data that we will understand in next video thank you see you in another video thank you very much